Okay, so I've been asked for something very particular and I think everyone could use one right now. So I'm going to show you how to make a felted version of a Dammit doll. And you can make this um, Dammit doll in any color shape that you desire. Um, a particular color combination was requested and so that's what I'm going to do here today. But in, in no way do I mean to offend anyone. This is just a, a, an old timey way to take out frustrations and I wanna show you how to create one with felt. So I'm gonna turn the camera down, turn the big lamp on and we are going to create a needle felted damn it doll. All right, so that's as low as I can get the camera. Let me line everything up so that we're all set up here. Okay, I think this will work. First, I have three t-shirt strips and it's just a single length that's folded in half up here at the top. It's just a simple braid and then tied at the ends. These are gonna be the legs and the body. This loop at the top will be the head. I took a single piece of t-shirt yarn and I wove it through the two ends of the braid and then I tied a knot in the back and these will be the arms that'll flail about as you smack this thing around. So that's what you'll need to start it out. Everyone's got an extra t-shirt at home that they can take and they can um, turn into uh, strips for a damn it doll. Now we're going to need a fair amount of undyed roving. That's gonna be the body of this. Then you can color it up any way you want, um, but to start out with, we need to make a head. And I'm going to take, I'm actually, I think I'm gonna take this whole darn thing. All right, so we've got about, I don't know, six, seven inch length of wool roving. And for those of you that have a, um, a kit from me, a basic kit or a deluxe kit from me, this is the same wool roving, the undyed roving that you have in your kits. So about six inches of that. We're gonna slide it through the loop that we made in the t-shirt braid, okay? Gonna get it about even, and then we're gonna tie a knot. This is gonna be our head, okay? And we're gonna make sure that it's fairly tight, and then we're going to wrap the fibers around, again, fairly tightly. And we're going to take one of our needles and because we've got t-shirt material in there we're not going to be able to go in very far so we're going to be adding some more fiber but I want to get this sort of basted in place so that it won't unravel on us all right and we can come in from different areas and different angles and we can get that basted in place. Our goal is just to have it stay there and not unravel on us, okay? So, we're kind of there. I'm going to add some more fiber, and I want more than this, but I'm gonna add a little bit at a time, and we're just going to continue wrapping around. And then when we get to the ends, doing a little needle felting to baste it into place, okay? We're not worrying about sculpting right now. This is not gonna be a heavily sculpted item. This is going to be, you know, akin to an old fashioned doll that doesn't have a face. Um, you know, it's, it's a very basic creation here. And I wanna make sure that this head stays up here. So I am coming and I'm working from the body toward the head to make sure that those fibers stay in place. We will be covering the rest of this, but I wanna get this head nice and defined for right now. Now your needle might go through the t-shirt um, strips that are um, braided in the center, and that's okay. Just be careful that you don't try to force the needle in, and that way you won't have to worry about breaking or bending a needle, okay? So just very gentle pounces. We're just going all the way around making sure that we've got the wool attached and we're gonna add until we're happy with the um, total product that we finished up here and the size of it. I want some more wool here because the Dammit doll that I'm making um, and the 
inspiration for this, damn it doll, has a rather large head. So I want to make sure that we get that in here as well as we can. Again, wrapping it around. And you saw that as I wrapped it around, I kept the fiber straight so that we don't have to worry about twisting those fibers. It's another way to do it. Just keep your hands open and make sure that you've got the fibers staying as straight as possible as you're wrapping it around and that way you won't have unexpected lumps and bumps. Okay? We're just gonna continue felting all the way around. And I think this is gonna do for the bulk of it, but I'll, I'll save my final decision until we build up the body around the lower portion of the braid. Again, we're just coming in at every angle that we can. We need a hard felt on this. We need a firm felt on this. For those of you who have taken a class or seen a video um, with me, you know that the way to figure out how well done your um, fibers are when you're felting is to hold your hand like this. If you feel a squish like this, and we're not quite that squishy because we've got a solid core in the middle, but if you feel a squish like this, that's a rare felt or akin to a rare stick. If you feel like this, and that's pretty much what we've got because we've got that nice knot in the center, that's a medium felt, okay? If you feel here, that's a firm felt or a well done stake. And this is what we're going for because the idea behind a dammit doll is that you whack it over and over on the table to get rid of your frustrations, okay? So this is what we're going for. So we're gonna continue working the head here on our dammit doll. until we've got it nice and firmly felted. And if we need to add extra fiber, we will. The goal here is just to make sure that we've got that head shape going for us. So we wanna come in at every angle possible. And we wanna felt this until we can't felt it anymore. So we want a firm felt for this. Otherwise, when we start whacking our dammit doll, uh, we are going to find it falling apart. And while depending on, you know, what you pattern this doll after, that might, you know, make you feel pretty good to see it disintegrate in front of you. Um, we want to be able to use this for as long as we need to release those frustrations, okay? So I'm coming in all the way around. And because it's a head, I'm sort of working on an angle here. I'm working on an arc, just rounding it out. It would be easy to go around like this. It's a little harder to go back and forth like this. So I let my stabbing hand be the one that goes back and forth on this arc. And I just hold it very firmly here down at the neck, so to speak. And we've got a nice medium felt going here. There's still some fibers that haven't really been well felted in, but this gives us a starting place at least. And we're still nice and medium there. So I want to keep working this. And you see how I'm working in the round here? I'm just sort of moving the head very slowly around with my non-stabbing hand so that I can come in at the same angle all the way around and get those fibers nicely felted. It takes a little practice to be able to move your item as you're working on it but I have faith in you. Just go slow until you get the system down for your hands. Trust your instincts. If you feel like, oh, I just hit something pretty firm, well, back that needle out and find a different place to stab. This is all about getting that firm felting all the way around. 
And we're just continuing on here. Going all the way around. And we've got a nice felt going here. It's still kind of a medium felt, so we want to continue working it. But you get the idea here. We're just working this over and over until we get that firm felt, okay? So, yes, this still needs some more work, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to show you how to build up the neck and the body here. Going back to our roving again, only I'm taking a piece, again, about six, seven inches long, and I'm going to split it in half. And this is going to be our neck. Now our neck is, these are our arms, so our neck is right above our arms. This is going to be shoulders and arms here, okay? So right here is where we want to wrap this bit of fiber, and we want to wrap it tight. And again, depending on who you're going to fashion this after, this might be an incredibly um, satisfactory experience, just wrapping that neck as tight as you can. But again, this doesn't have to be anyone in particular. We are just creating a doll to take out our frustrations on. All right, now I've wrapped it really tight. Because there's not a lot of fiber between my needle and the um, t-shirt here, I am going to come at it, I'm gonna come at it at this angle. I'm gonna come at this fiber almost parallel as I am basting it into place because I am coming into hitting that t-shirt you can sort of see it. it's a thunk thunk instead of the sound of the fibers going through fibers so you want to be very careful on the neck portion here you're gonna to have to come in at an angle to get those fibers to attach okay so it's just about going round and round and round until you can get those fibers connecting. And you may find yourself coming at an angle this way. This seems to be working really well. I'll try and get my hands up closer. I'm just coming in almost parallel and I'm going from the neck fibers into the head fibers because we want this to be a firm connection. And you see, can you hear that? That's fibers going into fibers. Can you hear this? That's me trying to stab into the t-shirt fabric. So our goal is to stab the fibers, not the t-shirt fabric, okay? So find a position that you can use where you're keeping your non-stabbing hand safe where you're coming in and out of the fibers the same direction, and where you're using your elbow, not your wrist, to help you do your light pouncing stabbing, okay? And we're just working all the way around. This is gonna be one that's gonna be a little tough to try and get those connections built up just because it's not very thick, okay? I'm gonna continue on. We're probably going to add some more fiber to the head, but I'm gonna continue on with the body here so that we can get an idea of what it's gonna be like to wrap this up. Now, for the shoulders, I'm trying to think which is, I think this will be the best way to show you. We want to wrap up some of the arms, but not all of the arms. So I'm gonna take it here, and then I'm gonna wrap it underneath one of the arms. And here's where having a couple of pins or an extra couple of needles can maybe come in handy for you. I've got it wrapped around there, and I'm gonna wrap this around here, and I'm using these extra needles to hold the arms out of the way. And then I'm gonna wrap this up here and we're going to cross it over, okay, and we're pulling pretty tight, and then we're going to wrap that around the neck in the front. But you see, we've got this nice little figure eight going here for the shoulders. And same thing, we're just trying to work these fibers in 
as best we can to go all the way around the shoulders and into the neck. And for some of this, we're going to be working at this odd angle here. I'm going to turn it sideways. We're just trying to get those fibers in there to connect with the other fibers. And I'm going to flip this around. We're going to look at the front. And we'll just wrap this fiber here to come over here to this part of the shoulder. Again, finding that angle that works for you to be able to get the fibers to connect to the other fibers. And you hear that sound so we know we're going into fiber. And then we'll wrap this one around to come over here in front. nice thing about needle felting is that you can felt in to other fibers and other fabrics. Um, you just have to be very careful about it so as to not destroy your needles as you're doing that. I mean, could I take and felt directly into this single t-shirt strip to make an arm? Probably. Am I going to do that for this purpose? No, but if I were using this as an armature, as you would, as it were, then maybe I would. And it's just a matter of what's the purpose of the item that you're creating. Is it going to sit on a you know countertop and not be touched? Well, then you can do a medium felt. You don't have to worry about the super good connections between the pieces. And you can, you know, get away with more of a lighter felted touch. If, however, you're doing something like a Dammit doll, this is going to get a lot of action. Um, the whole reason that I was asked to do this was because this um, individual, and I agree with them 100%, believe that all of us need something to take our frustrations out on right now and that this would be an appreciated project for so many people. So that's why we're making, you know, a Dammit doll here. And he looks a little wonky right now, and he's gonna look even wonkier after he gets smacked around a few times. You wanna make sure that just like any other project, you work from both sides so that you get a nice felted evenly all the way around your project. And again, this is a little fiddly because we've got the t-shirt um, braid and the t-shirt strips as the base, but we can still get in here. So we've got our basic setup and we've got, you know, kind of, kind of a shoulder going on there. And we will build that out quite an awful lot here in just a second. All right, we're going to take about a foot of the wool roving and we're going to start up here at the shoulders and we are going to wrap it oops got my color in there we're going to wrap it all the way around and you can either flip it around or you can do like i'm doing and rolling it really really tight and we are going down from the shoulders remember we're making the whole upper body all right so this is a starting out point. We're going to keep stabbing. And we wanna make sure that these fibers are gonna to stay together as compactly as possible. And they will loosen up a little bit, but we hope they don't loosen up a whole lot. Every once in a while, you'll find that you'll wanna change your needle. And it just depends on how it's felting for you. And if you're not seeing the fibers come together closer, then it might be time for a new needle. 
And remember, we don't have anything felted on the body here yet. So we are working with, you know, raw felt. There's nothing that's very well attached at all right now. So we need to work all the way around this so that we've got a nice attachment. And I'm getting off camera here a little bit. I apologize. I get so focused on what my hands are doing that I forget to look up and see how the camera angle is working for you guys. But we're working all the way around and we're gonna keep working until we are ready to say, okay, I need a little more fiber here or I need a little more fiber here. Trying to attach the fiber to where we've already done some felting so that we've got a nice solid connection. Unless you are very confident in your felting and not stabbing yourself, I would recommend that you don't do like I just did and hold it in your hand. Always keep it on your base so that you have something to protect your hands. And we're just trying to find those positions where we can get this fiber felted together. Pulling the arms out here in the front. Making sure I get in here. And these fibers that haven't felt it together very well. Connect them above and below. And we can open the arms up. And same thing. a little hangnail here and it's grabbing fiber every once in a while. If you have dry hands, which we all do these days, um, you want to make sure that you hydrate really, really well. Um, sometimes getting your hands nice and moisturized before you start felting can help you out tremendously. I would highly recommend having some uh, nourishing oil or having uh, very, you know, wonderfully creamy lotion handy so that if your hands are starting to grab the fibers a little bit, you can take and moisturize a little bit, make it a little easier on you. And still very, very squishy here. So we've got a lot of work to do. I'm going to take and work this in a nice grid pattern and we have to come in kind of at an angle because of that t-shirt braid being in the center but we can still reach all these fibers in all these areas it's just finding the right angle and working all the way around If you don't have felting materials, I do have several kits available. I have both a basic kit and I have a deluxe kit. The basic kit is $22. The deluxe kit is $65. Each of them will work for a number of projects. Of course, the deluxe kit will get you a few more projects than what the basic kit will. You have plenty of base fiber as well as lots and lots of options for dyed fiber colors, textures, the whole shebang. And if you don't know where to go and where to order online, you can certainly go to stabthingsintoexistence.com and you can order a kit from there. I would be happy to help you out. And we're continuing on. We're just working at different angles so that we can get that fiber connected in as many different ways as possible. We're doing well here. 
top portion's not getting quite as much love, and that's because we've got those knots in there that are making it a little difficult. And I think what I want to do is add a little fiber. I'm just going to take a little bit of fiber here. I'm going to split it in half. I'm going to try and build up this shoulder just a little bit by wrapping it around nice and tight. And again, we're not looking at sculpting right now necessarily. We're just looking at getting things covered the way they need to be covered. And then I'm going to take that needle and I'm going to work these edges straight back in and see if we can't get a little more definition for a shoulder up here and make it easier for us to felt these fibers together. Now I've not made a needle felted dammit doll before. This is my first time too, but I think it's a good practice in some basic body structure. Gives you an idea for what can be done and how to build up an underbody. That's what I call the undyed fiber. I call it the underbody because it's not got color on it. Um, it doesn't have the skin, so it's the muscles and the sinews and you know all of that stuff that's right on top of our skeleton. So this is the underbody. That's what I call it. And I think this is going to work out quite nicely. I think that's, what do you think? I think it's giving us a shoulder. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Wrap this around and get this anchored here and then wrap those fibers around that t-shirt string nice and tightly. It's fiddly trying to hold the t-shirt string up and out of the way but it can be done without twisting it. Once you get a little bulk built up you don't have to touch the t-shirt strand so much. All right. Now we're going to work this one into the body. Gives us sort of a shoulder and a bicep for lack of a better thought. Going to have skinny arms and skinny legs with the t-shirt strands for the skin for those arms and legs. And they will be out like they are now. We will add some color to the body. And again, you can leave it without any color on it, but I'm gonna add some color to it because I was asked to do a very specific um, representation. So I'm gonna add some color to it, but the arms will go quite nicely with the color we're gonna go with for the rest of the body basically going to be putting clothes on the body. We'll bypass skin except for the head and the rest of it will just be the outfit. And again, we're coming at this from a lot of different angles, giving ourselves the opportunity to see this come together. All right, I think that's a lot better and let's get these worked in to the shoulders and the neck at a different angle. Want to make sure that we get that felting going all the way around. This was not a planned video. This is a spur of the moment video for today based on a conversation with a good friend 
and a member of the Felted Experience. If you want to see regular tutorials, regular full tutorials, you should go to stabthingsintoexistence.com and make sure that I have your email address because we will be going live with the Felted Experience again at the end of April. We offer this membership, uh, we open it up a couple of times a year to anyone that wants to join. And the Felt It membership gets regular frequent access to me through our, my Facebook page, Anna Walker Designs, and through a private page, private group, that's put together just for members of the group. Members of the group also get individual attention for product projects that they're working on, suggestions and helpful hints for me, and a monthly full video tutorial on a specific project. Now, once you join, you get access to the video, and the April video will be posted relatively early in April, and it's going to be wet felted flowers and I'm trying out a new layout technique before I go live with uh, putting the video together and I think that it is going to be a fabulous way to create some beautiful felted flowers and it'll be April's video and you can have access to that if at the end of April you sign up to become a member of the Felted Experience membership. You'll get details by going to stabthingsintoexistence.com and leaving your email. And you get a weekly email from me. It's usually a post about something felting related, maybe a question, letting you know what's coming up, all kinds of stuff. So I hope you'll think about going over to the website and leaving me your email address because I'd love to have you join our experience. And then you can have fun with a monthly video tutorial on a felt project. Now I'm going to pull up the body just a little bit because I want this to be pretty tight in here. And I'm coming in parallel. Watch your fingers. Because this is a dammit doll, we want to make sure that we've got a nice felt going here. And to do that, we've got to come in at a par almost a parallel angle to get those fibers to tighten up nicely. And I know a lot of this is kind of boring, repetitious stuff, but I don't want to have to piece together different videos to make the full video experience. I want this to be in real time so that you can see what it takes to put this together in real time. And then you can prepare for the time you'll need to be able to complete this project. We're getting there. Just keep working those fibers. We are creating a, a critter that we can whack about to release some frustrations and some pent up anger and hostility. And we want to make sure that it's going to be able to do that for us for a good long time. So make sure we've got a really good solid felt going on here. And to get a good solid felt, you've got to come at it from as many angles as possible. That's the only way to make sure those connections are going to stay. And you can tell from these little black dots that I've gone through some of the t-shirt fabric because that's where those black dots are coming from. 
And that's okay because we're going to cover this with color, this particular individual represented, represented here is going to have on a dark suit coat to go with the dark arms okay, and the dark legs. We probably won't match it perfectly, but we'll get as close as we can. And the face is just going to be some color and I am going to put some hair on it, but I am not going to put any facial features on it, I don't think. If you want to put facial features on, absolutely go for it. But for a Damn It doll, it's not about the details. It's about it being sturdy enough to handle where we throw it and how we throw it, so to speak. I'm just coming in every single angle I can, making sure that I'm getting as good a connection as possible here. especially between the individual pieces because I want this to hold together nicely. If we were using an armature of wire we would do very similar to what I'm doing right now. I'm going along one side and along the other side of where that um, t-shirt fabric is. And that enables me to go through the fiber and not to hit the t-shirt fabric quite as much. And then I hit a lot of t-shirt fabric. So what do I know? <laughs> it's, a, it's a process. It's just finding out where those fibers are and giving them as many connecting points as possible. The neck's feeling pretty good. The head and the body need a little bit more work. But we're continuing on with them. I might need to add a little bit more fiber on the lower portion of the belly here. fiber around there. I'm going to take a piece that's just going to wrap around the center and ease lightly into the back. So let me do the back first because that's where the loose fibers are going to connect and overlap. front and get our belly done here and just attaching it to the fibers underneath Again, we're just continuing to work here. I know it's kind of boring to watch somebody do this and not have it in front of yourself to do it, but I wanted to let you see the process from beginning to end so that you would know how much time it's going to take and what it looked like along the way as we were creating this Damna doll. I want you to make one for yourself 
that is exactly what you want it to be. And it doesn't have to be um, designed with someone in mind, but it can be. Um, it can be just a generic, you know, doll. Maybe, maybe you're, you know, you want to make it a redheaded stepsister or, you know, a frog or that boyfriend that you broke up with years and years and years ago. I, you know, it doesn't have to be anything. You can make this the body of whatever animal you're afraid of. For me, it would be a snake body, but I'd have a hard time holding on to the damn it doll to whack it if it was a snake body, because that's how freaked out I am by snakes. And again, we're just gonna round this out. Sometimes you get to a point where you need to use a finer needle to help you pull those fibers in even tighter. And I kind of think I'm almost there. So I'm going to grab one of my super duper fine needles and see if it'll help me get a little bit firmer here. This is a size 42, and it's not a size that I generally put in my felting kits unless it's requested, only because it is super, super, super fine, which means that it is also, if it's used incorrectly or um, on a portion of a project that needs a coarser needle, means that it's also uh, more susceptible to breakage. So I don't usually include the 42s, uh, 42s are generally for fine sculpting details, but for me, because I've got this core in here, I wanted to come across with a 42 to make sure that we've got it as felted as we can. And again, I'm coming at it from a lot of different angles. because we want to felt those fibers in as much as possible. We don't want them to come apart when we whack this around. As long as you're careful where your non-stabbing hand is, you can certainly hold your project to get it a little closer. Gives you a little more control to be able to move it in different directions, but move slowly so that your needle doesn't get accidentally bent or broken. Find all of the areas, make sure that they're nicely felted. And you don't have to go fast with your pounces. There is something that I wanna show you and you've probably noticed it. I'm going fairly deep. I mean, the working end of the needle is only about this long, only about as long as my fingernail is wide. But if I go deeper and I stab, then I am getting the fibers that are in the center of the body to connect with one another even better. So it helps us build a more solid core if we go deep every once in a while. Sure we give some attention to the back. A little 
fiber sticking out there that I want to make sure gets in. Here that I want to tuck in. I'm going to fold those legs back so that I can make sure I get right in here really, really well. Just don't want to have any fibers coming loose. Testing. I think we passed the test. Need to take a look here. I want to give the head a little bit more sculpting just by bringing it in on the sides a little bit. Because we've got this fine needle, I may as well do a little bit of work making sure that the head is nicely felted. And making sure that it's nicely connected to the neck here. forgetting to tuck my fingers in. For some reason I like to do this when I'm working on projects on my own, but I need to make sure I tuck those fingers in so you guys can see what I'm actually doing. And we need to flatten out that head just a little bit. All right, am I happy with this? side of the neck just a little bit more. Stabbing things into existence can be very therapeutic, my friends. happy with this. Okay, so I'm going to put some features on here. This is going to be, this is a, a almost a skin tone. This is what I'm going to use on the head and the neck. And I'm just going to add a little bit of color at a time. I am using the fine needle that I have just because I have it, but you can use whatever needle you have on hand. Your 38s and 40s will do the job just fine. To put the skin on, you're going to do very shallow stabs and you're going to keep those stabs pretty parallel to the body where you're stabbing the skin into place. The goal isn't to go through the entire um, head and neck, the goal is to attach the skin to the head and neck. And so coming in with more parallel stabs will get that skin into place without having to go um, super deep when you're stabbing. Okay? You just work a fine grid all the way around and come in at whatever angle you need to, to make it work. I'm 
remember, coming in at almost a parallel to the head and neck as you can will make that skin attach exactly as you need it to without having to do any super firm felting on it. I'm going to bring this over the top. And continuing to work. Now if you don't have skin tone, um, you can take uh, a brown and mix it with a cream color or an undyed fiber. Um, you can start blending a couple of different colors together until you get that um, just right tone or you don't worry about it and you just leave it with the undyed fiber because this is not an exact representation. This is just us making a damn it doll that can be used to take out frustrations and hopefully you're losing some of those frustrations as you're stabbing your damn it doll into existence just take breaks every now and again rest your arms stretch your shoulders out all of that good stuff all right I gotta add a little bit more skin here And you see that I'm adding color just a little bit at a time. It's easier to get a, um, a more um, even tone if you add it just a little bit at a time than it is if you add a big old hunk of it and then try and blend it out to make it even. So much easier to do when you're working a tiny area and tiny bit at a time. I would much rather come over an area again and again and know that I'm getting a nice, even skin tone, you know, even coverage of whatever I'm doing than I would trying to figure out, okay, I put this big glob of color on here. Now, how am I going to get it to look even and, and cohesive? And just a tiny bit more, cover up this little bald spot. There we go. Fingers back again. I'm going to have to make a brace that keeps my fingers back. spot here in the front. The other thing about um, coming in at almost a parallel um, stab is that it pulls the fibers down into the base so you don't have that fuzzy look when you're done. Don't have as much of a fuzzy look anyway. our head and neck. Here we go. Let's see what we can do here. And sometimes you need to just sort of fluff the fibers out so that you can get them nice and even. Let's see where we're at. Here we go. Let's see if we can cover that with that. just a little bit more. Yep, just a tiny bit more. It's ironic, it's the same spot that it should be for a bald spot. Now there are um, places where you can order flesh colored wool in all kinds of skin tones. Um, 
and I will post a link to a couple of my favorite places to go so that if you're looking to do some skin toned um, items, you can have a variety of colors available and I'll make sure that I put that in the comments underneath the video. But there are a couple of different places. I am not a supplier. I mean, I've got the basic and the deluxe needle felting kit to get you started, but I will happily point you to the suppliers that I use and that have been very good to work with through the years for everything from merino wool for beautiful um, garments and hats to um, some coarser wool in flesh tones to um, another spot where you can order just about anything and everything you can possibly imagine. So I am happy to share those details with you. But if you need a basic kit, talk to me. I'll get you started. And then we'll get you hooked on felting and you'll, of course, want all of the resources. hope you'll join me for the ride with the felted experience. All right, let's take a look. Got a couple of loose areas here. Just going to try and felt those in. happy with this. I'm going to need to get some fiber to do the jacket here. But there's one thing I want to do. I want to sort of even out the back of these shoulders. I've just pulled the arms forward a little bit so that I can kind of even out the back of these shoulders. So they were kind of lumpy and bumpy. in like this and I can kind of even out those lumps and bumps. Watch your fingers. Watch where you're stabbing and where your non-stabbing hand is. Nice thing about this particular sculpture and doing a dammit doll is that because it's a soft sculpture You've got a little bit of room to be able to maneuver things and make it a little more comfortable for you to hold in place as you're trying to put it together. Okay, I'm not going to do the hair yet. The hair, I think, is going to be a finishing touch. But I do want to step aside and grab some color for the body here. And we've got our belly just the way I want it to look. And we've got our big head, which is perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we've got our arms. Probably use a little bit more there, but I think I can make that work with putting the body on. Okay, so it's it's a little squishy, but I've whacked it a couple of times and it's done okay. So now I'm going to step aside for just a second and I'll still be talking to you, but I've got to go get some fiber so that we can do the jacket that this particular individual is going to be wearing. And I'm hoping that I color. Otherwise I'll have to blend some together and that might work. And I think, I think we can make it work. One more color. And I think it's over here. I'm still right here with you. 
I promise I didn't go anywhere very far. I am just looking for, oh, I think that will work maybe. Oh, but it's for that. <laughs> Okay. Alright, I think we're going with the black suit coat. I mean, the arms are kind of a black color here, so we're going to go with a black suit coat. Here's what we'll need to do a tiny bit of sculpting, but only to make sure that we have kind of a collar of a shirt showing here. I'm gonna play with how we might do this. Oh, that actually might work. All right, I'm just gonna take a bit here, just a small bit of fiber. Find the staple length or how long the fiber is, and then I'm gonna twist it in the center. I'm gonna hold that twist, and I'm gonna put that twist right here in the middle, and I'm gonna stab that right here in the center and I know it's the same color as the underbody and that's okay because this is going to be our shirt collar and I just need to have a little bit of a collar standing up. See how I'm just folding and building kind of that triangular shape so that it looks kind of like a collar. doing this upside down, so please forgive me if it looks a little wonky right now. All right, and so I'll blend this down into here. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fold it up, and then back down again to be the other part of our collar. And these are just, you know, little things that you sort of play with until you find out what works. I've done um, a groom in a tux before. And so I had a little bit of an idea of how to put this collar together. And then we're just gonna blend these down. I'm not gonna worry about this hole here because it's gonna have a tie. But I do wanna come in and make sure that this is attached and I'm gonna to have to come in at an angle because we've got that knot for the head in there and make sure we get these fibers built into the chest here and then flip it around so then get this side of the collar We've just got that little bit of a divot right there, and that's all we need to make it look like we've got a little collar going there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the black and I'm gonna start to build that suit coat in there. And to do that, I'm gonna go, just like I said before, a little bit at a time Pull some fibers together and compress them down so that I can go right alongside that collar. So I'm going to go into the body because we're going to cover this whole thing with the black suit coat. Okay? Make sure I get around one collar and around the other collar before I go any further. So I'm being very particular about working my needle right alongside the collar so that we can make sure that that suit coat comes up behind it and looks like it's coming underneath it. And I'm going to wrap the black around.
remember when we're adding the color on the top, we're going pretty parallel to the body so that we can get those fibers to just attach to what we've already felted. We don't need to felt it, oh, fingers again, don't need to felt it completely, we just need to get it to attach to the fibers that are felted. Okay, now let's do the other side there. Got another piece. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna hold it right alongside where that collar is, and I'm gonna work the needle in right there. Making sure that I have that V nicely defined. And then I can come in and sort of pull the collar down a little bit. Point it back. Got a space for our, the knot of our tie. black fibers off of that head and let's just blend these right on in. Again, working up, building up that color just a little bit at a time making sure that it is felted into what's already been felted so that it stays in place. And then wrapping it all the way around. back here I know it seems like an awful lot that I added here but it's covering a fairly decent amount of space so it's easier to add a thin layer all the way across than it is to try and build up that thin layer a little bit at a time and this way I can get a fair amount of area covered, and then I can go back and take a look where I need to add some extra. Again, coming in at different angles, making sure that I'm coming in perpendicular and parallel so that we get a nice coverage and we get a nice attachment of the fibers to the body. Some more black. Is that a little bit right here around the shoulder? Wrap around where we can. But making sure that we're covering all of the fiber.
sure I get that nice and covered. Because those arms are going to flail around. I'll pull it this way. Pull that around and wrap it. There we go. I'm so entertaining, just talking your heads off. Talk amongst yourselves. We're just stabbing a damn it doll into existence. All right, let's get that other shoulder. Oh, that's looking nice. Get some fiber here. shoulder. Okay, so we pull that arm out a little bit. Make sure that we get that color right there where that t-shirt string is coming out. And I'm working the fibers in. Good, we're covered there nicely. Ooh, but not there. Okay, let's bring a little bit of this up here. There we go. Just making sure that those fibers are all connected where they need to be using your needle to stab in the direction that you need the fibers to go so if you want the fibers to go this way you're going to stab this way if you want the fibers to go this way you're going to stab this way okay we just got a little bit more and we've got our damn it doll covered and then I can do the hair to make sure this is as even as I can get it every once in a while you'll find a lighter color of fiber and just pull it loose I like to keep a set of tweezers handy helps out sometimes grabbing a hold of a fiber that doesn't want to move where you want it to move I hope this is giving you some ideas for something creative that you can do that can be a stress reliever, whether it's just in the process of creating it or whether it's making a damn it doll like we're doing today. Felting has got so many applications. We can do fun, silly stuff. We can do serious things. 
I have an art piece in mind that someday I'll get to. Um, current status of the world has sort of put a hold on my being able to go visit my friend who's got part of what's going to be the sculpture um, to help me uh, get the pieces ready. But that's okay. We're making do. We're doing what we can with what we got, right? We're not traveling, we're being safe. And I'm hoping all of you are staying safe. I'm not felting this thing completely right now. I more want to get the coverage that I need. And coverage is, is the key right now. So if I have an area that's not covered, that's what I'm focusing on for the moment. And I'm getting a basting of the fibers in place so that I can make sure that I've got coverage everywhere that I need to have coverage. And again, we get those fibers to attach to the underbody by going almost parallel and working them very closely to the surface. And that helps us keep those fibers from disappearing and sort of pulling out the underbody color. If we keep it as on the surface as possible when we're felting it, it'll stay there. If we go deep, we lose um, some of the color coverage that we need. And again, I'm just making sure that I've got this black wrapped all the way around the legs so that we've got coverage complete. And then we'll go and we'll clean up some of this fuzz so that we can see it better and make sure that we've got the coverage that we need. Trying to keep my fingers tucked in. At least I'm catching myself now. I don't think I used to even realize that I was doing it. Oh, we've got a little bit of underbody showing. No, we don't want underbody showing. Nobody wants to see that. Flipping the legs around from one side to the other to make sure that I get this felted in very nicely. And now we're at the point where I try and work a grid pattern to make sure that I've got fibers felted all the way around this dammit doll because I want the black to be cohesive and I don't want it to be fuzzy. Now I'll show you another trick that we can do that will help bring the fuzz down just a little bit. Fill up 
let's go all the way around our gambit doll first making sure that we've got all of that black suit attached Just rub this a little bit, just to get those fibers to lay down flat. And that'll give me an opportunity to come in with the needle and work on an angle where I'm sort of looking over the horizon line, just to see that those fibers are tucking down. working almost parallel to the skin and just twisting a little bit. Shallow stabs. Again, we're not felting this to the core. We're just felting this to the fibers that are already felted. going all the way around. Okay. Get our arms down where they need to be. Do a little work right here around the shoulders. Okay, I need to get, whoops, wrong way, there we go. I need to get some red fiber. the red that I need. All right. Two final pieces and then we're done with our damn it doll. And one of the final pieces is a tie. And what I'm gonna do is just up here at the top, I'm gonna make a little knot so it looks like the knot of a tie. I'm gonna twist those extra fibers down and we'll put the tie right here. That's the knot that I tied at one end of this red fiber. I'm just coming in at an angle so that I can get that tie to hold in right there in between the two collars. And now I'm going to come in at this side and I want to work this really, really well so that it stays put. Work the center here 
and just go back and forth and work that knot so that it stays where I want it to stay. And yes, I am going deep with these particular um, stabs because I want this red fiber to connect really deeply so that it'll stay put. Because if it's not connected really well, if we smack this around once or twice, it might come off. And we don't want that to happen. So I'm just coming in every angle just to make sure that I can get those fibers connected as deeply as possible. I'm coming in right here at the center of the tie to sort of give it that tie look. And then I am going to use my scissors and I'm going to trim it into a tie shape. Now, I probably should have done this first, but I'm gonna do this now. Just gonna give it a little bit of felting before I put it on the body so that it has a little bit of structure. Whoops, I just pulled out some belly. All right, now I'm gonna turn it upside down. Let's turn it this way. Oh, I'm seeing a couple of other spots where I can tack down some fibers. It's always good to look at your project from every angle possible. You'll see things that you wouldn't necessarily think about. And you wouldn't necessarily see unless you move it around in a lot of different areas. sort of give it a little bit of a turn under at the sides and just like we did at the top we're going to come in at the sides here I've got a little bit more I need to tuck in over here Again, looking at it from different angles always helps out. Coming in at an angle on the tie so that I can get those fibers to connect nicely. And do the same thing on this side. Ouch, got myself. You saw it here first. out just a little bit. Again, we're doing shallow stabs here. Come in here on the side a little bit more. All right, we've got our tie. Now for the hair. This might give away who I'm making. Remember, this was a request, one that I was happily able to uh, produce. extra fiber here. So it's slightly different color, but I'm going to take a tiny bit of it and I'm going to use it in combination 
with the other color to give us what we need. And I'm going to cut the color, cut the one yellow, because it is a little longer than the other. I'm going to take and just work this back and forth to blend those colors together a little bit. I don't know that I like this. I think it's too orange. So let me grab some pale yellow again. And let's try this. Um, hmm, that might work. It's all about looking and seeing what colors you have and what colors you don't have. I think this will work. So let's pull some off. exactly how much I'm going to need, but I am going to blend this lighter color with it. And let's see what we can come up with. When you're finger blending, it's just about overlapping and pulling through. Until you've got it as blended as much or as little as you want it. I think this is going to work. So, I'm going to take this, make sure that that's the front, it is. Have this on here. Sides. Remember, we're just stabbing shallow here. And for the other side. Oh, it's a little too high. Let's pull that back down. Yes, we're doing a comb over. I'm going to see how good I am at it.
and now it's just a matter of making sure that we've got the hair tacked down beautifully. Tilting it back and forth is always a good way to go to make sure that you get nice coverage all the way around. One damn it doll designed as requested. Shall we test it? Holds together kind of nicely. There we go. I hope you had fun creating your damn it doll or that you will have fun creating your damn it doll. And if you want to know more, give me a holler right here. Bye.